Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to go over another example of dynamic material parameters in Niagara. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and we want to create a master material. So we'll name this correctly and then whatever you want. And then we'll create a material instance from this and we'll name that correctly, MI. And now we want to create a Niagara emitter. And we're going to base this on the empty template. So we'll name that an E. And then we can move on to opening up the master material. So for this master material, we're not going to use any opacity, but we are going to use a vector three. And I'm going to convert this to a parameter. We'll just call this base color. And the default value, you can set this to whatever you want. I'm going to set this to a darker gray. And then we need a texture and we need a particle color. For the texture and the particle color, we're going to multiply these together. And then we'll plug this into emissive and we'll plug the base color into base color. For the texture, we're also going to convert this to a parameter. I'm going to just call this T emissive mask. And then for the placeholder, we're going to click on the drop down and we're going to type in noise and the engine should provide you with a bunch of different noise textures but I'm going to use T noise 01 for right now and then I'm going to save that. Now we can close out of that and we'll open up our material instance just to make sure that our parameters are showing up and to save it. Close out of that. Now we can open up our Niagara emitter and we start adjusting it. So in emitter update we need to spawn something so I'm going to do spawn burst and I'll set this value to 1 and instead of the sprite renderer I want to use a mesh. So we'll add a mesh renderer and in the particle mesh we're going to search for arrow and we want s underscore arrow. We'll turn on override materials and we'll click on this plus icon. This is where we're going to put our material instance. So we'll just put that in there. We'll hit save and then let's go take a look at what's showing up. And you can kind of see that that emissive mask is showing up. So from here I'm going to set up the initialized particle and you can choose whatever color you want but I'm going to set this to something like orange. And I think I'll bump up the red, I'll set it to something like 10. And then in particle update I'm going to do scale color and I'm going to change the scale RGB to a float. So it condenses them all into one. And I'll set this to something crazy like 200. And then we'll save this. So our emissive mask is working. But let's go see what we can do for our dynamic parameters. So in our master material, I'm going to add a panner. And I'm going to plug this into my UVs. Basically what this does is it makes it so this texture will pan on the X or the Y based on time. But we're not going to put any values in here. Instead, we're going to create that dynamic parameter. And the first parameter is going to be our emissive time. And our second parameter is going to be our emissive speed. Plug those in. Time into speed. And now there's one more parameter I want to set up. I want to control the emissive mask intensity. So right now that texture has some white spots on it, but I want to be able to set the value all the way down to black. So it's not showing up at all. So I'm going to multiply this texture by this third parameter and we'll just plug this one right into here. And that third parameter, we're just going to call that emissive mask. And the last thing I want to do here is I want to set the values for each one of these to zero. So they're not influencing anything. And then I'm going to save it. So we'll close out of this, we'll open up our Niagara emitter, and in particle update, this is where we want to add our dynamic material parameter. And as soon as we add that, you can see that our parameters show up, just as we name them. So the first one I'm going to look at is the emissive mask. So we can actually have something show up. 
and I'm going to change this to a curve. And then I'm going to set this first key to zero. So it shouldn't be showing anything. And then I'm just going to stair step some keys in here. For this first stair step, I'll set it to something like 0 0.5. The second one, I'll set it to 1. And then the third one, I'll set it to 0 0.8. With this last key being something like 0 0.4. And then I'm going to right click on it and smooth it out. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So it's basically just pulsing. It looks kind of cool. But if we take a look at our other parameters, time and speed, these two are kind of dependent on each other. You need to have a value in both of them. So I'm going to set the emissive time to a sine wave. And then the emissive speed, let's try something like 5, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, now we have something interesting going on. So once again, just another example of how to use dynamic material parameters. From here, you can go in and adjust all of this stuff. You can adjust the curve, you can change the sine wave to a curve, maybe you want something else in the emissive speed. So there's a lot of ways that you can customize. Alright guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.